Hey guys, welcome back to another review. I'm getting right back into it. It's been a little crazy this winter. We've had about every sickness here that you can imagine. <laughs> it really has been insane and I almost had a meltdown at Christmas time. <laughs> no, really, we had a lot of fun, but it just was nonstop accidents. I think we had like 10 visits to Instacare. We had two ER visits and it's just been nuts. So anyway, I'm so glad that kids are back in school, hopefully not catching anything else, although I'm sure they will be. Um, <laughs> and I can get back into routine and I have just been filming, filming, filming. I've got a lot of awesome things lined up. I have the new Essie Spring Collection. Today I'm reviewing and talking to you about the Essie Unguilty Pleasures Collection, which originally I thought was the Spring Collection, but I'm happy to say that it's not. If you've had a peek at the Essie Spring Collection, you probably are excited about it because they're definitely spring colors this collection's not like super spring so I was glad to hear that this wasn't the spring collection but it does have some beautiful colors and I think they are perfect as we transition from winter to spring and so I think it's a perfect collection I'm excited to talk about the colors with you guys today I also have the SE I believe it's the SE gel couture winter collection I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head I'll put it here but I have that to be reviewing too and I just got the olive and June winter collection up so I'm catching up to speed I'm happy Happy to be back into it and talking to you guys again and let's get into this review. So I purchased these a few weeks ago but they are available at Beyond Polish now I realize. They are there you can use my code GOLARI10 for a discount on those and trust me there are a few that you'll probably want to pick up and then I'll let you decide on the rest. Obviously, I hope these comparisons are helpful in helping you decide. So the first one I have is Snooze In, and it's this kind of muted, murky, peachy shade. It's kind of a mid-tone, so it was pretty close to my skin tone. I kind of like polishes that are not close to my skin tone. I'm not really like a nude kind of person. That sounded weird. <laughs> It doesn't stand out too much against my skin tone, but I have a medium skin tone, so hopefully that's helpful. Also, did think this one has just a really great formula. It has quite a bit of a white base, so you might need three coats with this one, but I think most of the time you're gonna get this opaque in two coats. There were a few nails, a few spots on my nails where I felt like I needed three coats, so you might have to have three, but really I think it's pretty good at two. So I don't know, Essie has quite a bit of colors like this one, but I felt like this one's more pink than orange, so a lot of the colors like Madrid it for the Gram and Frilly Lilies, those were more orange, and so I didn't pull those out, and a lot of other ones were like more pink, and this is kind of in between, so it's got a lot of pink and it's got a lot of orange in it, so let's look at those comparisons. So I compared it to Taj Mahal, that is one of my old favorites. It's been around for a super long time. I keep having to put thinner in mine, but that one's definitely more orange, and I was kind of hoping this would be an exact dupe for that, so I would have a new fresh bottle, of, but it's not. It's a little bit more pink, which I actually don't mind um, when they're next to each other. I kind of like Snooze In a little bit more than that one. And then Set in Sandstone is brighter and more peachy, so it's not as pink leaning, and then Hostess with the Mosis is lighter and even more peachier. So those are a little bit different. And then I get into the OPIs here, and so Corralling Your Spirit Animal, that one is bright brighter and not as muted and then freedom of peach this is pretty much an orange shade and then crawfish and for a compliment is a bright orange and it's definitely a little bit more cool toned so despite them having a lot of colors like this they seem to be making them quite unique they're doing a good job of not having them be all exactly the same so I liked this one just in the fact that it was unique but I really don't think that I'm going to be wearing it because I like to have a little bit of contrast on my nails so I'll let you decide if you want to pick this one up and then we have caught in the rain and this is a beautiful initially I would say sage color but it has a little bit more blue than the other sages that I have which I really really love about it and it's a little bit more like mid-tone so it's it's not as light as a lot of the other ones that Essie has so it is quite unique and I like it so so much and it's quite muted and a little bit moody if you guys saw my top five countdown on my Instagram page from 2022 you'll know that I'm kind of into the moody murky shades this year go check that out but anyway so this kind of goes along with how I've just been feeling this year and the mood and the favorite polishes that I picked out so I really really do like this one quite a bit the formula is just fantastic it's a little bit glossy but it's not sheer so it's gonna build up so so nice in two coats when polishes have formula like that it's so nice to use them because the edges just fill in so nicely and you really don't have to do a ton of cleanup if you're really careful and so it just went on like a dream it is just gorgeous. I love it so, so much. I love that it's kind of blue and it's kind of green, and I think there's going to be times that you feel like it's one
one color over the other and I love that in polishes and I haven't had that in a little while and so I was super excited about this one. Okay, so let's look at those comparisons. I compared it to Maximilian Strauss Her, and that one's lighter and it's a similar tone, maybe not as blue, but it's quite a bit lighter and so I pretty much thought they would be exactly the same so it was kind of nice to see them together and then Belief in Yourself is more green leaning and lighter and Jade It Happened is even more green but it's that same kind of mid-tone that this is um, or like a mid shade. Then I added another comp. I had Essie Bon Voyage and then Sage You Love Me from Gel Couture and Transcend the Trend and I didn't write any notes on this. <laughs> Not sure why, but I'll let you look at the differences there. I feel like a lot of those are going to be more green as well, and that will hopefully give you an idea of how blue this one is compared to those other ones. OPI really had no comparables, and so I didn't do any swatch comparisons for this. With the OPIs, they don't have a lot of these kind of muted pastel shades, especially in this color tone. They have a lot of like bright mint blues and bright mint greens, so they don't really have any sage colors. I think that would be really nice for them to add more in their line because they really have just not done that. Essie does it a ton. They have a lot of various shades and tones of these kind of colors, but OPI really doesn't. So I love this one. It's it's so nice. You guys definitely need to pick this one up. And then we have Unguilty Pleasures, and this is the namesake of the collection. It's a beautiful turquoise it is quite a bit murky and muted as well it's kind of the whole theme of the collection is a little bit muted so it's not like your bright summer turquoise and I like that about it I think it's really nice especially as we move into spring to have a color like this that's still a little bit muted and not super bright and it is a good balance between green and blue I feel like it probably is obviously because it's a turquoise a little more green leaning but it's really nice shade the formula on this one is really nice too you're gonna get an opaque in one to two coats possibly but it really is gonna build up really nicely I think in one coat for you but like I say always I like to do two and let's get into those comparisons so I compared it to Naughty Nautical and that one's pretty close um, but that one has glitter in it but it's kind of that same tone but I think if you took the glitter out it wouldn't be as bright and that Unguilty Pleasures would be a little bit more muted and then Viva Antigua is a brighter turquoise and it has a lot of glitter and then Bustling Bazaar is that bright kind of summery turquoise. It's definitely more green. Uh, that is my favorite summer turquoise. It's so good. I always get excited to wear that one in the summer. I need to remember to pull that out because I'm not sure if I pulled that one out this last year, but I'll definitely remember to try to pull it out this year. And then I compared it to OPI Amazon Amazoff and that one's darker and more green. A lot of these OPIs were going to be more green that I picked out just because they were kind of murky like this. And then their other turquoises were even more green leaning and they were more bright. So I felt like these were closer than those. And so I pulled these out, but I, then I have OPI My Studios on Spring and that one's a darker and more green. And then is that a spirit in your pocket is more blue. <laughs> I felt like this one was pretty unique too, at least the ones that I have here that you can see. So I like that it's a little bit different, a little bit muted, and I think it's perfect for winter time. And then we have this beautiful blue, and you guys know that I am loving blues <laughs> right now. It's like the year of blues for me, and I especially love this one. This is to me, from me, love the name, <laughs> and I love the color. It's like this denim blue. You guys know I picked my favorite polish of the year for last year, 2022, was Morgan Taylor tailored for you. It's very similar to this one. I forgot to pull it out until I was just getting ready to film this, so I will add that comparison later so you can see, but I kind of feel like this one's darker than that, but it's kind of a very similar color tone. So this is like a denim blue. It's definitely muted, and a little bit grayed out and murky and I love it so much you guys it's so good the formula is just fantastic it's gonna be opaque in one to two coats you definitely need to get this one it is so so pretty there's gonna be some essays that I know you guys are gonna to want to see compared to it so let's get into those I have flare for fun which I really thought would be pretty close to this but it is quite a bit softer and lighter and it's um it's not <laughs> and then anchor down is more navy and maybe has a little bit of purple in it and carols and caviar is a muted navy and it's darker so this is kind of a good ombre of these kind of murky blues as they go from lighter to darker and so you can see that they're all quite a bit different so this next set I have not painted on yet so I cannot tell you the exact differences but I'm just gonna show the picture here and then I'm gonna say the names and then you guys can see here so we have OPI grabs a unicorn by the horn I feel like that one's gonna be pretty close to this and then tailored for 
for you is I believe lighter but you can see here in the picture and then drama at La Scala is more green leading but I wanted to put another OPI on there but really there's nothing that's like exact as this and I just love it I think you need it <laughs> It's good. And then we have No To Do, and I love the name with this one as well. It's really interesting because it's muted and murky and gray, but it also has a little bit of warmth to it as well. So it's not gonna be as warm as some of your OPI browns that are really warm. Essie does not have a ton of browns, but I did pull them out so you can see them. So it's a little bit different, at least within Essie's line. And the formula is really great on this one too. It's gonna build up, I would say two coats for this one because it's a little bit sheerish, not a ton. I shouldn't say sheer. It's a little bit crelly, not really. <laughs> But it just doesn't build up in one coat. You're definitely going to need two for this one because it just looks a lot nicer. Let's get into those comparisons. Okay, so I compared it to Meek Muffs. Um, that one's lighter, but it's it's kind of similar though. Similar vibes. And then Truth or Bear. I feel like No To Do is a darker version of Meek Muffs. And then Truth or Bear is lighter and Slay It is lighter also. And it has a hint of like gray green in it. Okay, and then Squeaker of the House is lighter and a hint cooler. And that's what Friends Are Thor is a touch darker but it's super, super close. Maybe a touch cooler too, but I felt like that one was pretty close when I was just looking at on my nails, especially just in my room lighting. And then especially your inner self is warmer and a little brighter. So you can see that No To Do is warm, but it's not quite as warm as that one. So like I said, nothing exactly the same as this, but I do like that Essie is bringing in more browns because you guys know how much I love brown, especially in the fall. And I can see myself wearing it. I had a hard time deciding if I should wear this color today or the next one that I'm going to talk about and I chose the next one but I think they're both really great. I kind of was just craving something dark because I'll be honest with you the last three weeks I haven't had any polish on my nails because it's just been hectic <laughs> and it was kind of nice to take a break so I haven't worn a lot of these darker shades and so I was craving them so I'm still kind of in the dark shade mode. Love this one. Okay, this is the last one. It's so gorgeous, you guys. This is Home by 8, and it's a really dark, smoky, gray, purple, brown shade. Love all those colors in there together. It definitely leans a little bit cooler, though, so it doesn't have a lot of brown in it, but it definitely has like a hint of brown in it. It goes on the nail a little bit darker than it looks in the bottle. So when you hold it up to smoke and hot, you think they're going to be very, very close, but this one goes on quite a bit richer than that one. So it's kind of like the richer version of smoke and hot, and we'll get into that in a second. Second, but the formula is really fantastic. You pretty much can get it opaque in one coat. There were some nails where I was like, no, I'm going to need two for sure. So it's not like, it just depends on how you apply it, I guess. But it's got a really, really great formula that can totally build up in one, but you might want to do two to have it a little bit thinner. A lot of my swatches, if they're able to go in one coat, I will like make it happen. And that might not be how you want to apply it. You might want to do two thinner coats, but sometimes I just like to show off how awesome they can be in one coat. <laughs> But sometimes it's better to do two. So anyway, let's talk about the comparisons so you can see those firsthand. The smoke and hot, as you can see, like I said, looks similar in the bottle, but on the nail, Home by Eight dries down quite a bit darker. And then Generation Zen is more gray and Winning Streak is more of a purple gray and a little bit lighter. Those are all just really great colors. Essie does such a good job with colors like this. For some OPI comps, Susie and the Arctic Fox is close, but a little bit more purple. And then Chronological Order is more brown, but that next to it shows how much purple that Home Bay has. And then Rub a Pub Pub is more gray. I feel like this is a darker version of Smoke and Hot, so maybe you feel like you don't need this one, but I love it. It is interesting because when I'm looking at it here now, I think it looks like a dark brown. But I think sometimes I think it's going to look kind of like a smoky gray, and then there are going to be times probably when it's lighter outside where it's definitely going to look purple. And I love polishes like that, so of course I love this one. Time to pick my favorites. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> All of them except for that peach shade, honestly. Like, I think I'm just in the mood for all these murky shades, but look how beautiful. So, oh, I forgot to mention. So this is the one I'm wearing on my nails. Yeah, I kind of mentioned that. So I love all of these. It really is such a great collection, you guys. I feel like you might need them all, except for that peach. I don't know. I don't really care about that peach too much. <laughs> I don't wear shades like that too often. So, ah, sorry. It's the start of the new year. So if you're doing a no buy, then you probably really shouldn't even be watching this video. <laughs> Let's be honest, don't watch these videos if you're on a no buy. But if you're starting off the new year wanting to get some fun new polish, then get these because I think they're great. I hope this review was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in your comments below if you already got some of these because I know I'm a little bit late in the game with this review. But if you haven't and you're still thinking about which ones to get, let me know which ones you want to pick up. Thanks so much for always being here and always watching. You guys are the best and we'll see you next time.